pâturait dans les bois, mais je ne me fie pas car on est. Devant qui va Noé abaissa-t-il sa lance aujourd'hui Devant une juive dans mes rêves et... De comme York. Testing, testing, mic check, one, two, testing, testing. What's good, world? We back at Astoria Houses. This time I'm doing a quick unboxing of an exclusive product I just picked up. Boom. <clears throat> This is what I consider to be one of the most influential shoes out there. Bada beam, bada boom, right? The big difference is these cost me less than $20 cash moolah, right? Um, I tried them on in the store and I found they were super comfortable. I've been trying on Jordans for the last couple of months. Uh, I really don't know much about Jordans other than that they are dope, usually dope designs. They look great. But as you can see, I've always been an and one guy um, or I've always been a guy that prefers function over over style and all of that. And, on, and basically over all of the hype and bullshit. Right now. This design has been copied in the rollerblading, uh, aggressive rollerblading community, the aggressive inline skate community on the remedy skate or rem skate. And it's been copied on the God skate. Right now, obviously, there's a few differences on the design, but I tried these on in this in this Chinese shop in, in Astoria, uh, not Astoria, wherever I was. I tried them on. Actually, I was in Jamaica, Queens when I tried these on. But what I discovered is that these seem more comfortable than a lot of shoes, than a lot of actual Jordans I've tried on in Foot Locker. So I'm going to, you know, give you guys a quick little little insight into these. Um And then I'm actually going to play with them. I will say that there are points in the sole where it's very soft, where it almost feels like it's hollow. Uh, so after I do this review, play with them for a bit, I'm actually going to dissect them, cut them open so you can see the uh, construction. I also have a pair of unauthentic Jordans uh, of, the, of, these, of these Jordans. I believe these are the 12s coming in from uh, China, uh, a replica pair. And then eventually what I'm going to do is get a real pair. So I'm comparing the super cheap knockoff. These are the Air Sport, I believe. It's, it sounds funny, right? But these are the Air Sport. And um, so I'm going to first give you guys the first, uh, you know, first impressions of the Air Sport. Then I'm going to follow up with the replica versions of the 12s. And then eventually I'm going to get a real pair of 12s and uh, put them to the test. The final test might also be to actually get a pair of Jordans themselves, right? Uh, not Jordans, I'm sorry, the God skates. But um, anyways, that's a first look, first impressions. This is your box. It's very minimalist. You don't get a whole lot with this packaging, right? But uh, let's give it a try. It's a little damp and wet out, and I figure what better way to test a shoe's traction than when it's wet and raining out. They do feel comfortable. I'll be honest, right now off the rip, they feel lighter than my M ones. There is padding there. I feel like the M ones have more padding, even though these are a low top shoe. Give these bad boys a little bit of a lace. Oh man, this is so weird. Gotta loop this through the top, huh? I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. This is a very interesting lace system. And this is a size 10. I'm in a 10, 10 and a half, but this size 10 fits well. There's definitely some toe room. I could probably fit into a size nine, nine and a half in this, uh, you know, in this uh, blatant ripoff of a classic Jordan shoe. Let's see what we got. Put this here. This goes here. Yeah. 
All right, first impressions. Hey, they could use a little bit more padding. I feel like if I, I feel like if I break these in, um, I feel like they will break in quickly and they probably will break, but uh, only time will tell. Geez, there is a bit of room in here. They just don't feel as snug and as comfy as, uh, as my Air ones. You know, I feel like the biggest thing with basketball shoes and similar to skate shoes is the is the um, the lateral stability, right? That sort of you know, if you if you run, if you're running and you have to come to a complete stop, will you be able to balance on the edge on the outside edge of your foot or of your sole? You know, so you know, similar to in skating. That would be like your Royale, Farvig Nugent, backslide or torque slide. Um, you know, uh, my N ones, I feel like they have a lot of stability so that the foot doesn't roll so that you bait. This is, uh, you know, this this lateral stability I, I speak of is, regard, is in regards to ankle rolling where you can easily sprain and or break your ankle. So we're going to just kind of, you know, do some drills. But first, I'm going to do a quick cut and I'm going to do another unboxing first impressions of a product that I just picked up which is ideal for wet outdoor uh, rainy conditions and we are back what I've got right here is the you know what I need my phone for this shit the phone's recording but this is uh, the N1 Hydro it's the Hydro something this is the it's an N1 basketball that's essentially designed for the wet outdoors, comes with an N1 pump. Nothing special here, it's just a cheap uh, cheap basketball pump from China, but I love this feature. They've got these, uh, the needles, right? I don't know how you take them out. How do you take them out? I guess you just yank them. Oh yeah, I've got the needle right here. It's pretty cool, right? Get into it. So that's the big giant bag. You put your, you put your, your good chiba in there. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So it's the Hydro Grip, moisture absorbing technology, indoor outdoor composite leather. I've decided to get this basketball and test it because a lot of the balls I buy, and I buy, a, I, I don't buy a lot of basketballs, but I get basketballs. I'd say I probably, I probably get anywhere from two to to four basketballs any given year, and that's any given active year, I should say. And if it's not basketballs, maybe I get a basketball. Maybe in that same year I buy two footballs, soccer balls. I love sports and I love basketball and football and I love the element it provides where I don't need anyone to play the sport. I don't have to rely on anyone to be there. I can go shoot around by myself. Even if I don't have a basketball hoop or court, I can still dribble and practice my handle. Uh, and the same applies with football. But the reason I'm trying this out is because a lot of the basketballs I've gotten in the past, I've used them on days where it might have been moist like right now. It's not raining, but the ground is wet and moist. And what I what I discovered is that I ended up ruining $40, $50 basketballs in less than an hour by taking them out into a wet, moist condition or environment. So this is going to be my go-to basketball if it can prove uh, effective in this uh, so-called moisture, moisture absorbing technology. So we're gonna put this BI to the test. That was 50 pumps. Oh, shit, this needle came up. Oh, the needle comes up with air. Wow. I push down. I see that. Can you see that? That's sick. All right, so that's about 50 pumps. I'm still pretty flat. It's moisture absorbing. I think moisture absorbing might be the wrong term because I think the other basketballs, the reason why they failed so quickly is because they actually absorbed the moisture. And then the 
the composite leather deteriorated like that. And it no longer had the same grip, the same feel. So, you know, I spend that extra, you know, most basketballs range around 30 to, you know, I would say around 30, $40 range. You get a basketball that's 30 to $50, you're getting a high quality ball to take it outside and realize you just ruined it. It, it was pretty depressing. This, I think I got on Amazon. This might've been 30 bucks. Um, obviously it's N1. So I think people are looking, maybe looking down on it because of the brand. Um, as most people do with marketing, they see something that if it's not popular, it's not cool. I think differently. You give me a pair of Velcro, you know, Velcro orthopedic shoes from the, from the, from the pharmacy and I'll make them, I'll make them shits look fly, you know? I'm not going to front. The ball feels pretty good. And it's it's wet right here. Like, all of this is water. I don't know if you can see that. This is all water. I'm trying to get this shit as wet as I can. Give you guys a little bit of splash and dash. It's still a bit soft. But it feels like a ball that, when it's wet... You're definitely losing. You're definitely losing grip when it's wet. However, let me see what's going on with this ball. I need a bit more air. The key is watching it when it dries. So I'll give you guys the, the final uh, feedback once I get it to dry. Once I take it back inside. Has that like cheap? The bounce almost feels. Nah, this ball feels really, really good. I'm not. I'm not going front. take this show on the road I think this might be the the better court as you can see it's it's pretty dry in the middle guys little so you're getting a in this in this review in this single edit you're getting some feedback not just on the ball Getting feedback, not just on the ball, but on the kicks. Uh, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. Right, the ball is slipping. Uh, this is kind of dope. When it's wet, if you hit it right, you'll get the. Uh, it actually creates a dope basketball logo on the floor. Quick, two quick drills on these, run around a little bit. Young and old. Alright, if I'm being honest, he 
this shoe is kind of, kind of, I gotta tighten these up. Ugh. All right, if you notice here in the toe area, they're already bunching up when you tighten the laces. I don't think you can see it. But like, right in this area here. I'll tell you what, what drill I find works really good. You heard it first. The, the hood said they not fucking with these. But that's why I'm here. Anyways, they do look, do look a little cheap. But whatever. for nothing I feel like if it's not if except for the padding like the actual grip and padding around this area here it's basically it feels basically almost like a sock like a you know a tight sock but I'm sure performance wise toes grip I really can't complain It's always good having any, anytime you get something new, it's always going to feel great, but it's been in water. I've dribbled it in the dry area and it seems to dry pretty quickly. So it doesn't seem very wet as we speak right now. Yes, there's moisture in there and my hands, I don't know if you can tell, but like I'm feeling a little moisture in the fingers and I'm sure if I had something white or lightly colored, I could like wipe it against it and you'd see the moisture absorb into the cloth, but overall, yeah, I'm big.
There you have it. That's the and one hydro grip. Meant for rainy, wet conditions like today. Oh, I'm slipping. Test. This is the real test. This has been soaked in water now. I'm gonna dribble it. Except for, yeah, no, this is, this is a fucking good ball right here. I feel like the Spalding balls that I'm used to copping, usually, usually if I did that, it's game over. The rest of the day is going to suck. The ball is going to be soggy. This ball seems like it has a, a sort of combination between your regular composite leather and those cheap rubber basketballs. I feel like underneath this is a rubber skin that's repelling the water back out. So I think... Moisture absorbing has got to be the wrong term because you don't want to absorb moisture. You want to repel it. All right, I'm gonna call it quits. Last shot.
All right, I'm gonna recap my thoughts real quick. It's wet, the shoes are kind of trash, but they still function, you know? They function like a shoe. I feel like ankle support, padding, cushioning, that sort of stuff. I'd probably give it a thumb down. Ball, the grip, even though it's wet, I still feel more confident with this ball than most balls when they're wet. Um, what I would say though is this material might be perfect for the outside of a shoe. When you're playing in the rain, it might be perfect for the outside of a ski. All right. <laughs> well, there you have it. It's the M1 Hydro Grip. It almost sounds like that Hydro has a little something to do with that. My eyes slow, eyes close. Watch out for 5 volts. What you mean? Nah, I'm talking about them D12s. The blue and whites. All about survival. I do this with my eyes closed. So I'm gonna just deflate this biatch. So I can pack it away. my technique for deflating a ball, put a little weight on it. Probably gonna take these bum ass shoes off. <clears throat> I mean, obviously there's the hype because of Jordan, but like I said, I've tried on a number of Jordans in Foot Locker, especially. I think Foot Locker, put, uh, Foot Locker and who's the other one, Champs? Foot Locker, yeah, mostly Foot Lockers. But, uh, like, I'm a comfort person, first and foremost. Like, if I can't, like, I'm not going to ball and, like, and I'm not the type to, I'm not worried about creasing nothing. I don't care if they cost me a million dollars. If I bought them to play bowling and they cost a million dollars, I'm going to ball in them. I'm going to walk in them. The last time I did some immature shit like that with a product for the sake of vanity, I was probably, I was probably still in high school, dead ass. And I think right, in, right around that time, is when I stopped giving a fuck about what other people think. And that's right around the time when I decided I was going to start aggressive rollerblading. Even though I didn't know shit about it, even though all the research I did came up with blanks, you know what I mean? At, at that time, you couldn't find a a, a, plethora, a a plethora of shit on YouTube. You couldn't find all these throwback videos, you know? The World Wide Web wasn't that worldwide at the time. <sighs> But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna put these bitches back. I put all my EM ones. Yeah, this is extremely soft at the bottom. Let me see how these feel. Oh, these are these are like compared to these, you know, and they almost have a quite a similar profile. The soles on these are extremely thin. The soles here are clearly as thick as it looks. And when you press here, you feel almost not like you feel very little res You feel uh, you feel a lot of resistance, so it's very compact padding. Like I said, with this shoe, this sole stops right around this 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 halfway point on the black rubber, and this point here, I feel like I can push my finger all the way through. I think if I had a, even a pencil, I could poke right through this. Um, let me see. Does the insole come out on this? That's usually a good indicator for me what type of quality shoe I'm working with. This is what the inside looks like. This is your tongue. This is the back of the shoe. And these are the Air Sports. All right. I like to leave one of the needles in the ball sometimes just for uh, safekeeping, but I realize that's an easy way for moisture and things to get inside of it. So I'm going to take it out as a precaution since this is still brand new and I'm already loving it. I love that it comes with a pump and it comes with this cool little, you know, feature for the needles. I think that's been a big flaw for, for, for pumps in the past is that the needles always get damaged. 
So I always had to get creative about, about where I put the needles, where I stash them. And that was one reason why I would deflate them every after every game and put them back inside. Alright, these lacings are extremely cheap, I'll tell you that. 